are so excited to meet you here for our Wednesday evening in the Word. We are excited about what the Lord is doing in us, through us, and for us for such a time as this. Please tag and share this evening's discourse, this evening's dialogue, as the Lord continues to minister to our spirits on the topic that we are reminded that we are in a new covenant with Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's get ready for the Lord to bless us tonight. Once again, let's tag and share as we continue to bless the Lord tonight and engage in his holy scriptures as he continues to remind us of the blessings of the Lord that surrounds us and the blessings of the Lord and the promises that are yes and amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the new covenant that we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we ask you to minister to our spirits. Increase our capacity to believe you as it relates to the new covenant that we have in Christ Jesus. God, tonight as we've come, we've gathered together from the north, south, east, and west in your name. We are your children, your sheep of your pasture, and we are here to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us as we continue to operate in the power and the authority that you have given us through your word. So God, tonight as we engage in your scriptures, as we engage in tonight's Bible study, continue, oh God, to increase us in the name of Jesus. Now, God, Holy Spirit, have your way. Wrap your arms around us and God, continue to believe in us like never before, for great is your faithfulness towards us. We trust you tonight as we engage in your word, line upon line and precept upon precept. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer, let us say amen. Once again, we are elated that you decided to meet us today for our series, our covenant, the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Our scripture reference is Hebrews chapter number eight. And please tag and share tonight. And please take some time to review our first point of this series. Again, the new covenant in Christ Jesus, reminding us of the rights and privileges that we have in Jesus. Tonight, we are reminded that Jesus Christ presides over a superior priesthood with a better covenant and better promises. Hebrews chapter number 8 provides a very similar contrast of the Old Testament and the New Testament authority. The Old Testament and the New Testament covenant that we have in Jesus Christ. This text provides us with the contrast between the superiority of Jesus Christ and the new covenant that we have in him and the old covenant that is under the Mosaic law. So we are clear again that Jesus Christ presides over a superior priesthood and a better covenant and better promises. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 8 verse 6, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch he is also a mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. There again are many priests in the earth but no earthly priest could take away the sins of the world as Jesus did. Therefore, Jesus' ministry is a far better ministry under his priesthood than under the law of Moses. Jesus is our mediator. He is a mediator of a better covenant, the covenant of grace and not of works, lest any man should boast. The covenant of grace and not of works is guaranteed by Jesus Christ, our co-signer, where this covenant of grace, this new covenant, not under the law, but written in the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ, is marked by believing and receiving instead of earning and deserving. We are clear tonight that by faith we must please God because without faith it is impossible to please him. The just shall live 
by faith. So therefore, we are marked by believing and receiving. And thank God it is not by earning or deserving. This covenant, the new covenant with better promises, with better promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, is given to us even though we don't deserve it. It is called grace, the unmerited favor of God. There's nothing that we can do to earn it. There's nothing that we can do to receive it. It is given to us willingly and freely because Jesus Christ loves us. We thank God for Jesus being our mediator. A mediator, very clear. I want to give you an update concerning this mediator that Jesus is concerning us. A mediator is one who stands in the middle between two people and brings them together. A mediator is one who stands in the middle of two people and brings them together. Moses was the mediator of the old covenant because he brought two parties together. But Jesus Christ is the mediator of the new covenant, a better covenant standing between us and God. Sin disconnected us to God, but Jesus Christ through salvation connects us to God. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, brings us a better covenant and brings us access to God, which brings us access to power, which gives us access to authority. Aren't we thankful that Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant? far more exceeding than the previous covenants made by men. God made these covenant these covenants with men, but the covenant of Jesus fulfills all the other covenants in the Bible. Jesus came to fulfill the other covenants. Jesus came to fulfill the law. There is an eternal covenant between us and God. We are reminded of the covenants that God made with men. God's redemptive plan was continued through the covenant that he made with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And then it was continued another step in God's redemptive plan, plan with the covenant that he made with Moses, the Mosaic covenant. And then there was the Davidic covenant, the covenant that God made with David. It was yet another step in God's redemptive plan. And then there was Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The redemptive plan was fulfilled through Jesus Christ our Lord. The redemptive plan of God was fulfilled in this new covenant. Jesus, he's given us promises. Jesus gives us promises even in dark and dim times. Jesus gives us promises and reminds us that they are alive and they remain. Jesus Christ's promises are yes and amen through the working of the Holy Spirit. There are promises that God will perform. There are promises of blessings and undeserved favor that he's given to us instead of judgment. He's given us this far superior covenant that provides far superior promises. We thank you, Jesus, for giving us a better covenant through your blood. Jesus Christ provides us with the superior covenant. According to Hebrews chapter number 8, verse 7, the fact that God mentions other covenants, it is proof that there was something lacking in the old covenant. Verse 7 says this, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. The first covenant had fault. It is in the nature of man to find fault. We, as men and women, operate in error. God understood our humanity. 
he understood that he needed a redemptive plan for his people. It is our nature, the nature of man, to come up with things new that we need even when it's not needed. But thank God he is not like that. God had a redemptive plan that was established, established in the new covenant because there was lacking in the old. There was sin that disconnected us from God in the new covenant. But Jesus Christ came to take away the sins of the world. The judgment that was on the world was on Jesus Christ way back on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. He took the weight of sin. He took on the judgment of sin so we don't have to. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for bearing our sin on the cross. The new covenant is presented to us in verses 8 through 12, Hebrews chapter number 8. This is what the Bible says. Because finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel in the house of Jacob, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying, know the Lord. Why? Because all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them. Oh, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Verses 8 through 12. The crux of the new covenant. The word of the Lord reminding us of what he's given us in the new covenant, that we're going to know him for ourselves. This passage finds fault in humanity. God shows that there's something lacking in the old covenant. Why? Because the new covenant was promised. It is reminding us in the book of Jeremiah, behold, the days are coming. The days were coming where there will be a renewal in the new covenant after the law was already established. There's a new covenant in Jesus Christ our Lord, not made of law, but may catch this with love. The love of the Lord is embedded in the new covenant that we have in Jesus. In this context, it is clear that this covenant that God has given to us is true. It is new, it is improved, and it is marked with the blood of Jesus. We are clear that this new covenant that we have in Jesus Christ is marked not in the law, but in love. I need you to catch that tonight. Not by the law, but in love. That's why there's no condemnation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but our sins does not omit us from receiving the new covenant in Jesus Christ. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's laid his life down because of the covenant. We are thankful tonight that we have the new covenant in Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Lord, the covenant of love and not of the law, the covenant of grace and not of legalism, the covenant that is seeped in the love of the Lord. Somebody tonight get excited because we're under a covenant of love. Oh, we're thankful tonight for the covenant of love that we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is clear that we have this new covenant in Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not like the covenant that God made with our fathers. We are clear that this is a different covenant because it's the new covenant in Jesus Christ our Lord. There is no error. There is no weakness, but all of power, might, and of strength. See, the Old Testament covenant was seeped in weakness. It was in the weakness and the inability of man to follow. That is why the Old Covenant did not work. That we could not get it right. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. But God said, this time, I will not allow sin to disconnect me from my people. I'll send my son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to go down to earth to show them the way. To go down to earth to save them from their sins and become their savior. We are elated that Jesus Christ decided to come to deliver us from our sin. There is a weakness that is in mankind. This is why the old covenant would not work. But God said through the new covenant, the covenant in Christ Jesus, I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts. This is the new covenant and it features this transformation. We are transformed how? By the renewing of our mind. We are transformed within. This is not an outward transformation. We are talking about a new work. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Why? Because we've been transformed because we are new creatures in Jesus Christ our Lord. This transformation happens within us. It's not based on law, but it's based on love. This covenant that we're in, in through Jesus Christ our Lord, God said that this new covenant is written in our minds and in our hearts. When we're transformed, once we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, it is now a heart-to-heart -heart connection. Our DNA is changed where we have a blood transfusion. The blood of Jesus is now directly connected to us. Therefore, it's a heart thing. It's all about love and not about the law. We are reminded that as he transforms our hearts, I need you to catch this, he will transfer our mind. Let this mind be in Jesus Christ that is also in us. As we receive the transformation, because we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, all things are new. All things are new through Christ Jesus. We are excited about the new transformation that we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. God said he will be our God and he, we will be his people. This is showing, and I want you to catch this, a greater intimacy that's connected with the new covenant. We have access to Jesus Christ. We have access to God. That's why God wants us to commune with him. God has given us a divine connection through the new covenant. God wants us to continue to commune with him because we're in covenant with him. There is a divine connection that God has given us, that he wants us to be very intimate with him. Share your deepest concerns. Share your heart with him. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares about you. He's requiring, beloved, 
a new level of intimacy with him. This is a feature that's connected to the new covenant. It is made available through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we are clear in this moment that the New Testament offers a new connection with Christ Jesus, that we have completion, that we are complete in Christ. Nothing's missing, and there is nothing broken in you because you are complete in Christ Jesus. You are completely cleansed from sin. You are completely covered by the blood of Jesus. That's why there's no weapon that's formed against you that can prosper. And any tongue that rises up against you in judgment, God said he shall condemn. Why? Because this is the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. I need you to say to yourself tonight that I am covered and I'm complete and I am cleansed. I need you to put that in the chat tonight as we engage in this moment that I am covered, I'm complete, and I am cleansed through the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Those are three words that we need to meditate on throughout this week, that we are cleansed, we are covered, and we are complete in Christ Jesus. We are thankful that the Old Testament is different from the New, that God has given us a better way, that there is a significance in this new covenant. The Bible says in verse 13, it says that he says a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. Now what has become obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. God made the first, the old covenant, obsolete because the new covenant has been inaugurated through Jesus Christ our Lord and fulfilled. Therefore, the Old Testament is obsolete. This message is clear to us in this text that it does not matter what your background is, don't be concerned about your past, that you cannot go back to the old way. Someone say, I can't go back. I cannot go back to what it was. There's, we're never going back to the way that it was. Why? Because the way things used to be before salvation, pre-salvation, is inferior to the new life that you have in Christ Jesus. That's why everything in your past has vanished. Someone needs to make the declaration tonight that old things of my life are passed away, and behold, I'm moving into what's new. God tonight is giving us a charge to move into what's new and what's next. I need you to tag that tonight. I need you to meditate on that word that he's charging us to move into what's new and what's next. Woo! We thank the Lord that we're moving into what's new and what's next. God is reminding us of these differences between the old and the new covenant. This new covenant is built again on the blood of Jesus Christ, that they had two separate entities, two different mediators, but God is telling us that there is a more perfected way in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that Jesus Christ is giving us the greatest sacrifice in his blood. He is reminding us of what's new and what's next. So I need you throughout this week to be encouraged and be reminded that you are covered and that you are cleansed under the new covenant with Christ Jesus. I want us to remember throughout this week that we are covered and we are cleansed in the new covenant in Christ Jesus. That old things are passed away. And behold, we are standing in what's new. So I need you to be encouraged 
to move into what's next. God is telling us tonight under the new covenant of, in Jesus Christ our Lord that this is your time. It is your turn. Move into what's new and move into what's next. What's our three C's? We are complete. We are cleansed. And we are covered. We are complete. We are cleansed. And we are covered under the new covenant of Jesus Christ our Lord. In the words of Bishop T.D. Jakes, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because you are cleansed. <laughs> you are complete. And you are covered. Now you're ready for new and next. God bless you. We thank you again for meeting us here at FBC for our Wednesday evening in the Word. Remember, we are moving into what's new and next because we are under a new covenant in Christ Jesus. He has more in store just for you. Father, we thank you now for this moment in time. We thank you for encouraging our hearts. We thank you for reminding us of how special we are to you. We thank you, oh God, for the rights and privileges that are connected to the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Father, throughout this week, help us to meditate on your word both day and night. Continue to remind us that we are cleansed and we are complete and covered through the new covenant in Jesus Christ. Help us, oh God, to outline your word line upon line and precept upon precept to execute what's new and next in this season. We bless you, oh God, and we give you glory. In Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let us say amen together. Once again, thank you for meeting me right here at FBC for our Wednesday evening in the word. The Lord is certainly blessing us and we are thankful for it. Please meet me here next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for another session as the Lord continues to download revelation and continues to stretch us and open our capacity to believe beyond our expectation. God said he'll do exceeding and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think according to what the power that worketh in you. You have power, you have presence, you have purpose on your life. Remember, let's walk into what's new and what's next. God bless you, and I'll see you same time next week, every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m.